just a little background on PHP. It is a server-side language like ASP.NET is. It's very similar to ASP.NET. If you've heard of Adobe's Cold Fusion, it's like it's that's another competitor. And then Sun Microsystems has the JSP, which is a Java, Java server pages. By far, PHP is the most popular of all of these. And again, it uses a web server. It'll work on IIS, Microsoft's server. And as and it's but it's really best designed for Apache. Here's where you're going to get some frustrations in your earlier couple weeks of using PHP, and that's that browsers do not recognize PHP code. If you run PHP in your browser, it's just going to cough and spit. You have to run your PHP code through the server so it can get, it get, can get handled, and then it sends back a pure HTML to the, to the browser. Now, your first inclination is going to be to do what you did in XHTML, and that's going to be to take a web page or your PHP page, open up a browser, and look at it, and it's going to fail miserably. So when you do this, you're going to have to put your PHP code in a special folder, which will be your onboard web server, and then you're going to use your browser, set it to localhost, so it points to that web server. Now, after you get the feel of it, in a couple weeks, you won't even think anything of it. You'll just use localhost and go right into your files. Now, PHP came from Rasmus Lerdoff in 1994. The, the, the name PHP came from personal, personal homepage, and he wanted a system to help him write his, his web pages. So he called it... PHP Hypertext Preprocessor, and this is kind of a, a programming joke because it's recursive. The, the title uh, turns in on itself, so it's P of the PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. He's making a, a recursive title there, a re recursive acronym. Apache is another op open source project, um, and it's, it's the most common web server out there. And I do have a link out here, netcraft.com slash survey will give you up-to-date stats on, on what's the most popular server right now. Apache also runs on Linux as well as the Windows, the Microsoft products. So that means PHP works on top of Apache, so PHP also works with Microsoft IIS. And when you install the Easy PHP, you get a, 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 an Apache web server. You get PHP, MySQL database. The reason on this slide that I had you put it in the root, C colon, was it's much quicker to get to. It's easier to locate for testing. Now, depending upon where you uh, install PHP, you're going to, you're going to going to want to find that folder and then look in that folder for the www. The www folder is equivalent to the public underscore HTML folder on your cPanel. And in order to view it, you just type in localhost or an IP address of 127.0.0.1. These two are equivalent. So let's open up a, a browser, preferably Firefox and just type in localhost. And you should see the easy PHP uh, entry screen. Again, you can either, in your browser, you either can type in localhost or use the IP address of 127.0.0.1. So let's write a test script. Open up. Uh, now, if you did a web page from earlier, you can open that up. And you have to save it with a .php extension in order for PHP to pick it up and use it, just like we had to do .asp.net or ASPX. So open up, I would call this index.php, and do your HTML, put in your title, do your body, give yourself a heading, and then this is where we put in the PHP code. We use a less than question mark PHP, it doesn't matter. It can be upper lowercase. And then the closing is question mark greater than. 
So that's what is going to trigger off the PHP engine on the server. And we're going to use a very useful function, function called PHP info, which is going to tell us all about our server. And then when you do a file save as, save that in your www folder. So go ahead and type this in and then we'll continue when everybody has their web page up. Just a few things. Notice that the piece that I have in red, this is what hap this is what the PHP server handles. You have to put the semicolon in at the end of each line. So this is very Java like or C. And when you save your file, it has to end in .php for the server, the PHP server, to pick it up and handle your, your PHP code. And there's really two pieces here. There's going to turn out to be three or four pieces. There's the regular HTML that on this slide is in blue. So when the browser reads through it or the PHP server reads through it, it's just going to take this HTML and pass it through. Then when it comes to the PHP the, that I have in red here, then it's going to put on its PHP hat and, and handle this information. In other words, it'll go to this PHP info function and, and process it. Then it goes back to the body. Now, you can also include JavaScript and CSS on your PHP pages, so you're really having like four languages on one page. Also, if you happen to be using TextPad, you can go out to TextPad to their add-ons folder, and you can download the color syntax file for, uh, for PHP coding. Um, and then you can store this in, in the sample folder of TextPad. So you extract the, 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 the color coding file and put it in the sample folder of TextPad. This is a graphic of how PHP works. And for those of you that have finished the ASP.NET series, you'll, this will be real familiar to you. Now this is out in the, on the World Wide Web, so this is the, the big version. I'm going to show you the local host version on the next slide. So here's our browser in the lower left corner. It's going to send a request to the web page. So we're going to look for a web page with a IP address of 123.0.0.1 hello.php. The server is going to receive that request and find that PHP, and it's going to take all the, co all the PHP code and it's going to process it. So as we move up to the upper right hand corner, you're going to see where it says it's this, this simple example is just going to echo the word hello, hello world. That's going to output to a plain HTML document, stripping off all the PHP stuff and just doing what prints out. And then that's going to be returned back to the browser where it's displayed. So when the person looks at it in the browser, they're not seeing any PHP code. All they're seeing is the output from the PHP engine. Now, when you run Easy PHP as a local host, you can just imagine a little tiny web server alongside your browser window and with a PHP server on top of it, and this all happens in miniature, and it comes back to your browser and displays. And where is that web server PHP? Where are those files located? On your, on your hard drive? <coughs> Anybody? What folder are they in? They have to be in the WW folder. If, if they are someplace else, then this process won't happen. Open up your, uh, on this slide it says source PHP, but what did you call it? Wasn't it test PHP? So view your test PHP again and open it up in a browser and, and look at view source. So that one line of PHP info generated all of that HTML code. And it's a table, isn't it? Yeah. And there's some CSS in there too, isn't there? Yeah. So that little function did a lot of work. Now, anybody looking at that page, do they know what you typed in on your source code? Not at all. 
Now, open up your browser and, and do a file open and look at your test.php file directly. So open up your browser, do a file open, and then open up that PHP file without going through the server. And what happens when you view it? Well, minus what? The web page shows up, but what else shows? What doesn't show up? The PHP info. Now do a view source on that, and what do you see? This is looking at the PHP file directly without processing. Do you see all your PHP code in there? Yeah, the PHP code is unhandled. It's just like raw. So that's why you can't use a browser to look at your PHP code directly, your PHP pages. You have to pass it through a server. We're just lucky to have the, the local host to do it. Now keep those three things in mind because you're going to do some of those things unintentionally in the future. First of all, you're going to open up a PHP file and you're going to say, how come it's not working? And then you have to remind yourself, oh, yes, I have to go through localhost. Uh, we've all done it. We've all done it more times than we'll ever admit. And then also, you'll inadvertently close your easy PHP. It'll stop running. And all of a sudden, things won't connect, and you'll go into a panic. Well, don't panic. Just go in and start your web server up again. Now, if all else fails, you can shut down your machine, restart it, and start from scratch, and that usually restarts your PHP server and everything works again. Um, don't go into a frenzy and start reinstalling PHP or easy PHP. You don't have to do all that. You know, I've even had students say, well, I reinstalled XP. You don't have to do that. It's probably a really simple thing that uh, has to do with your, your local host. So here's what we've talked about. The origins of PHP, and now it's open source. We installed a server, a local server, using EasyPHP. We tested the server. We set up your environment with several shortcuts. And you should, you should have a big picture on how server-side programming works.